Wicked. How are you doing? Lovely, mate. Yeah, all good. You? Wicked, wicked. Now, listen, you have become an overnight celebrity. Like, you're everywhere. <laughs> it's true, mate. I'm, it's, you're everywhere. I see, you, I see every flyer, your name's on it. I'm trying, mate. I'm still learning, but I'm trying. It's wicked, though. It's, it's nice to see, man. Um, you know, it's... Yeah, it's nice to see. It's just nice to see. Yeah, yeah see, with all the... All the cool, cool guys in the scene, the nice ones, you know what I mean? Like LSD and yeah. Chalky, you yeah. know, Flip Matt, you know, you, you, all, the, all the cool guys in the scene, man. Yeah, the originators. Yes. So talk to me, how, what was a teenage Danny Lyons like? Terrible. Absolutely terrible. Horrible person to be around. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I, was, I wasn't... Um, from a youngster, I was quite, I wouldn't say troubled, but I got into the scene with the wrong type of people and done what I had to do to survive in them days, as we do. And um, it become it become my downfall, really, in life. It was We had fantastic times. You can never bring back them times of raving ever again, really. We try to. We try to recreate it every day, every rave that we do. But them days for me were fantastic. But, yeah, I've become... Yeah, it, it, I think it was the drugs, the drug scene and stuff like that. Just, I've become troubled as a youngster. Maybe I started too young. I started when I was like 15, 16, do you know what I mean? And I was raving hard at 17, 18. You know, when you look at 17, you 18 year olds now, they're more interested in TikTok. Do you know what I mean? It's like, so we was out there traveling all around the place at that age. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, I got involved in the wrong sort of stuff when I was younger and for quite a while and then realized that, and I got thrown out of my ass as, as a young stuff for doing what I was doing, that I had to change my ways. So I wasn't a very nice person. I was still a good person to be around, a good energy, but who wasn't in a rave? You know what I mean? So I just got involved with the wrong type of people. And, and uh, But at the end of the day, we was just living life, you know? Do we, so when you say living, are you saying to acid, acid house? Um, jungle was it hardcore? Was it rec what was what kind of genre was it them days? Well, when I was younger, I was what, being in the East End. We was always around sort of it was multicultural, wasn't it? Do you know what I mean? So we, we had so many different influences of music from blues parties to reggae. You know, I was massively into reggae, ska. You know, I used to dress in like two tone clothes and and stuff like that back in the day, do you know what I mean? So I was into the ska scene, um, massively into the reggae scene. Um, I'm actually a bit of a reggae don, believe it or not. <laughs> so it is my passion, as I said to you earlier. But yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I kind of sort of, my teens at sort of 16, 17 was Acid House. So we kind of went through the Acid House scene and then went into the hardcore sort of scene, the old, you know, the old school, the hardcore and then progressed kind of to jungle. And then sort of as sort of garage, later garage started, I sort of left that scene because it kind of became, it wasn't for me, that scene wasn't what, it, it was still a good scene and there's good people come out of garage, a lot of people that I know in the garage scene, but it just wasn't for me. And at that time, I believe mentally, I wasn't stable enough to stay in the scene anymore because we'd done a lot of raving as youngsters and, and done what we did, you know, so. It was probably a good time for me to come out of it. But it's not saying I didn't rave. I still went back to other raves and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? But I wasn't so like full on Friday night, we go out, return home Monday morning. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, the acid ass and hardcore and old school was really me, you know. And jungle. I like jungle as well, drum and bass. So so how did how did Danny Danny Lines come about? What 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 was the um what got you into the music background? What got you in there? How did it come about, Danny Lyons, as a host, MC? I've, even when I was young, we used to have house parties and start, like, stuff like that. So there's early pictures of me having parties in my house, you know, and stuff like that. I've always picked up a mic, always done that. I've had massive influences from certain people, you know, in the past who were MCs um, that I always followed when I was young and I was around when I was young. Um, but it kind of, I started with the radio station doing security work. So I was, you know, 
I'm a, I'm a close protection officer. I've I've got my own security company. I've been doing it for a very long time. But we got asked to come in and uh, basically secure premises and secure parties. And, you know, I've just done that for a while. And then one day I was on the radio um, on Time FM with DJ Bubbler. And I just, I, I, I kind of, we was doing centerful sessions at the time. And I kind of picked up the mic and just done a few shout outs for him. And then my mate said to me, Dan, you know, I've got a nice voice on the radio. And I was like, serious? He went, yeah. He said, mate, just keep this up. He said, because I like your voice and your energy. You know, so that's kind of where it went. And then, uh, like I said, I just carried on doing radio shows. I've probably done a radio, two radio shows every week for at least the last 10 years, apart from when I'm on holiday. What DJ, so, what kind so, of DJs were you um, oh, um, hosting mate, for? Give us some names. Mate, give us some names. You... I, I, I have hosted. You give me a name and I'll tell you if I've hosted. <laughs> I, know you've done, I know you've done LSD. Um, I, I don't know if you've done... I've done Leroy, Leroy Fornil, Prodigy, Billy Daniel Bunter, yeah. LSD, Slipmat, Rat Pack, Mickey Finn, Groove Rider, Chris Paul, Bloody DJ Rap. Yeah. Um, oh, mate, I, I, have, I have done a lot of people on the radio and on raves. Uh, yeah. Randall, Randall um, oh, Corporation Dave. I mean, all of the Centerfall DJs. I've, I've pretty much... Honestly, mate, I'm, I do a Hall of Fame show on a Friday night on Centre Force at nine o'clock, and I'm literally running out of people to do. Like, <laughs> I, <laughs> like I, I've, I've done everyone, but you know, there's there's, there's a few people like Evanson Allen and people like that, and um, LSD and Mark Lipmaster, Mark Slip Matt. You know, we've all become very close friends because we we think very alike. We're very peaceful, happy people now. Do you know what I mean? And we don't want anything from each other, and they're just full of compliments, which I like. You know. Yeah, and, and I work hard at what I do. Anything I've ever done in life, I don't give up. If if it fails me, I'll I'll give it up, you know. But everything I've ever done, I've tried to do the best version of me. That's 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 my philosophy behind what I do, you know. I just try my best. I try and be a nice person and just do my best. Yeah. So, so you know tell me what about the security firm. Tell everyone about your um how that started. How did that start? Well. I, I, I originally, Britannia Canine Security is my company. Mm. We've been going for quite a long time. But to be fair, I, I actually started teaching young kids. M people won't know this, but the name Britannia actually comes from Britannia Village in Silvertown um, in East London. I, I basically took the kids off the streets. Um, there was a divide between council. You know when I started putting up all the new flats and apartments? Mm -hmm. uh, in the early 2000s, things like that. And they was dividing the sort of communities. So you'd have an estate side and then you'd have a richer side. So there was never anything for the kids. So I was into martial arts myself and I thought, do you know what? I've, I've done all my qualifications, done my black belts, done this, done that. And I brought the children into the community or in Britannia Village. We called it Britannia Gym. And I worked just teaching them, taking them fighting, training, some spiritual stuff, meditation, you know, Stuff like that, just getting them, trying to get them on the straight and narrow. Because obviously what I've been through as a youngster, it's nice to, I trained all my children to black belt, my own kids, you know, and we just, we were a family, you know. So I, I took the kids off the streets, helped them train. Tim West would come along. I was chauffeuring at the time. Tim West would come along, agreed to, with me to be our sponsor. Um, then I was asked to go and do security. Um, and then basically, my security experience, um, I was territorial army. I've, I've done stuff like that to get my head straight. Um, it just kind of progressed. So I, I started as a bodyguard and I was doing um, some quite serious bodyguarding stuff for um, for some certain people from America over here that were living in England. And a guy said to me, like, we need canine handlers for, for the job. So I was like, well, put me on a course. I'll learn it. And to be fair, my old granddad said to me, he said to me, when you're 20, enjoy yourself, enjoy your life. When you're 30, find something you like doing. When you're 40, try and earn money out of it. And when you're 50, calm down. Yeah, and that's exactly how I've lived my life. I just worked and worked and worked. Ended up as a parks officer in Islington and Broxbourne, you know, people were like, Danny Lyons has got a, got a warrant, like, you know to arrest and I'm carrying handcuffs. I mean, it was just, it was, <laughs> ra it, it was just random. Yeah. You understand what I mean? 
but it, look, it was a it was a learning curve for me. It got my head straight. It got me experience. It got me a good CV and what I do. I ended up, um, funny enough, near telepathy, um, like Marshgate Lane, and I was running my dog one time over there when I was doing the canals and um, patrolling them areas. And uh, two Irish fellas come over and said to me, "Do you want to do the Olympics, 2012 Olympics?" And I and I just kind of laughed at him. And um, the the story of it is, I, we met, we had a meeting. I ended up with one guard on the Olympic site. I ended up doing the demolition remediation, all of the security, and I had it for about eight years. And I had about a thousand people working for me per shift a day. So we had about two thousand staff on there. And um, yeah, that's what kind of made my CV, to be fair. So. And then my wife, you know, I, I handed it over to another company, G4S, and, and they carried on with the Olympics. And I kind of, after a year, I'm not one for, I've worked for a lot of people, but I'm not one for actually working for someone else. I like to have my own opinion on things and maybe I'm a bit of a control freak, yeah? <laughs> but in a good way. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I kind of just, it, it went to them. I trooped all my friends over, all my mates, and we started Britannia Canine Security again. And and the rest is history. I brought a few people from the Olympics after 2012. We've got a strong team, and we, we pretty much do a load of things. Festivals, you know, garden premises, anything. That's basically the rundown of Britannia Canine. So. Wicked. So you, and you, I ended you up mentioned Tim, as well. Okay, so you mentioned Sorry. Tim Westwood, um, yeah. bodyguard for him. Who else? Tell, tell everyone who else who else used to bodyguard for? Mate, I've bodyguarded for the New Zealand All Blacks. Not that they even need it, but taking them around London. I've bodyguarded for Jude Law. I've bodyguarded for UB40. I've bodyguarded for every single The Only Way is Essex star, Peter Andre. Um, mate, so many people. Pogba. Um, on, honestly, I've done a lot of people. That's just a few names to mention. NBA NBA players, um, yeah, Arabs, pr pretty much the whole circuit, really. But I get called by quite a well-known bodyguard in the industry. He phones me when it's like a high-level client, and then I'll go and do it. He, he trusts me with his life. Do you know what I mean? He put, he'll put me with anybody, Hollywood stars, anything. I don't care. I'll do all of them, you know, and I have done. So, yeah. yeah. Well, that's made you feel starstruck. <laughs> <laughs> I just get on with the work. I just go there, try and do my best, look after them, and then, then go home. You know. But there must be like someone who's like, "Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm actually looking after you." It's like, like if. It, do you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. I have done a lot of top end celebrities, like top end celebrities, and I've never, ever, ever felt starstruck with any of them. Not it's one, good, isn't it? No, and I think that's why my friend uses me because you're not starstruck. You're comfortable. Do you see what I'm saying? You just treat them like a normal human being. You just go to work and you do the job. And I think that's pretty much me. That's the way I come across. I'm very approachable. So that's that's the way I work. So, so what, what would you say changed your life? What changed your life from, from the bad boy, Danny Lyons, to, to the quieter, more serious? I had to go on the run for three years. I'll be straight with you. I had to go on the run for three years for some of the stuff I was doing. And I had, I had a baby. Um, I'd adopted two kids as well. Um, and I just, you know, I got to the point in my life where I actually thought you'll either die as an addict or doing what you're doing. Yeah. Which was always a concern of my parents, you know, so that my, my dad and my mum wasn't really, even though they're from the East End, they didn't really know about the scene. They didn't understand it. Let's be honest. My, most people didn't understand it. it was a movement. All of a sudden it was a movement and everyone was just going out raving every weekend and just necking substances. And at the end of the day, we was just enjoying our life. But they didn't, the, the, you'd come home, dirt under your nails and all mangled like that on a Sunday morning. And they'd be like, what's going on here? But they didn't have, they didn't have a clue, you know? And, um, it, it, you know, it, it just, I think there just comes a stage in your life where you've just got to say, no, enough's enough. Do you know what I mean? And, and I think now I'm, I'm super clean. I train six days a week. I've been martial arts twice a day twice a week, sorry, um, I don't drink. You know, unfortunately, I've started vaping after 10 years of not smoking, um, God knows why, but you know, that's the, I suppose that's the addictive personality in people. You know, it just, it just happens. But yeah, I, I them reasons alone 
made me in the late 90s, early 2000, I was letting too many people down in my life. I, it was too, I say this from the heart, I upset a lot of people very, very close to me. And at the end of the day, it was a road for self-destruction. Do you understand what I mean? So you, you either have to change your life or you'll end up dead in prison or just not a liked person. And, and that wasn't for me. And, I, and at the end of the day, my goal was to make my family comfortable, to make me feel better, and and for people to trust me again because I, I wasn't trusted as a youngster. So that's it, really. So what was your, what's your involvement with Centre Force? Talk, tell us about Centre Force. I've been with Centre Force for a long, long time. Obviously, I was a listener when I was young. Um, I was taken up to a station when I was like 89. You know, I popped in there, went in the studio when I was a youngster. Um, kind of stayed away, away from the scene for quite a while, as I said, but then was invited back to do security, picked up the mic, the rest is history. But ended up with my own shows, ended up hosting everybody. Um, I'd like to say, I'm, I mean, Roger the Doctor, God rest his soul, said I was Father Lyons. I'm the voice of Centre Force. Um, and, I, and I've worked hard for that, you know, and, and enjoyed every minute of it. And I don't want anything out of it. I don't want no personal games. For me, to be on stage, seeing people happy and enjoying themselves, I'm feeding from that energy and they're getting my energy. Do you understand what I'm saying? So for me, it's just, it's not a personal game. For me, it's just having fun. And being part of Centre Force has been a big, big part of my life. It's, I'm there, you know what I mean? I'm like the furniture. So, and it's, it's just a nice thing to do. And it, and it reaches out to a lot of people. It's got really huge and yeah, legendary. And it's opened, it's also legendary. opened a lot of doors for me. It's, it's, you know, I was I was a big fantasy listener when I was young. You know what I mean and stuff like that. So it's it, it's just opened a lot of doors for me. And at the end of the day, I've got to thank them for that because that was my platform. But you know, when you go out to raves and people start seeing you and legends in the game, you know, like Matt, Ev. Anybody that's worked with me has always complimented on me. And for me, it's not only nostalgic standing on stage with these guys and working with them, because I used to rave to them as a youngster and be up the front, you know, like having it large. Yeah. But now I'm doing that to other people and I'm working with them guys and they're recommending me. I mean, that's, it's, it's, it's merit in itself. You know what I mean? It makes me happy inside. It's good. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so talk, talk to me about the, the radio transmitter days. <laughs> yeah so yeah obviously so so back then we was called the concrete crew i won't divulge on too much because i might yeah, have took yeah. down i might have took down the wrong people explain rigs. what you can explain <laughs> but I, I i was brought in really i mean it's a crazy story to be honest and most people don't know this but when when our signal wasn't getting out at certain times um we, we was going out with scanners and we was taking down people's rigs. But I was going there with a firm of security, locking off the bottom of the tower blocks, showing my passes and fake passes and all that to get past their men and take down the rigs and bury them in concrete and uh, have a turn out at the bottom of the stairs and do what we had to do to, to get our signal out further. And to, to be honest, we was doing such a good job that I've still got the certificate hanging in my office that Ofcom actually asked for us. I mean, let's, let's be honest. We, we, was, we was doing something illegal. Yeah, at the, at the end of the day, we, we was taking off rigs for them, but not for them, Yeah, <laughs> for us. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then they turned around to us and went, do you know what? You're doing half doing a good job, yeah? Can you come on a couple of stings with us? And like, that, we, we went to one with where, the, where there was one in a forest where it was wrapped barbed wire around it and the rig and that was in a tree. You know, and we climbed up the trees and we chopped the tree down and chopped the rig down. You know, and they actually sent a letter to us and said, like, thanks for helping us. Do you know what I mean? I mean, it's, 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 it's Matt. We like me and a couple of certain people that are big in the industry. I won't mention their names, but we laugh about this to this day because it, it, it's, it's proper weird. You know, like you end up having an Ofcom asking you to help them. Do you know what I mean? It, it, honestly, the enemy mate, of my enemy is my friend. Mate, I. I <laughs> It, it was jokes. I mean, it was just, it, it, honestly, it was it was mad times. And look, we've done what we had to do to survive. And like most people with radios, everyone was out putting their rigs up all over the place and doing what they had to do 
to to get their signal out and get their sounds out and and we we just done the same really yeah on a little bit of a madder scale <laughs> turning up with 15 doormen and dogs at the bottom of the tower block <laughs> do, you, do you know what i mean what is what is um what is your preferred taste of music then Where, what do you like to play host to most what, like during the day when I'm driving around? When you're driving or, around, when you're MCing, what, what do you prefer? Do you know what? When I'm, when I'm driving around, I listen to a lot of reggae, a lot of rare groove, um, funk soul. Um, do you know what? I was just driving home now from meditation. I was listening to Rod Stewart. My, 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 my range of music, my, my dad brought, brought us up on sort of rock. You know, he was a rock fan. He, he went into a bit of blues and stuff like that, a bit of jazz. Um, and, and my mum listened to soul and stuff like that. But predominantly, I, I always enjoyed the reggae scene. So I will host anything for anyone. I'll be honest. The only thing I can't is spit bars. I'm just an old school host, you know? I normally work with Chalky and that. And it, we, we just, we've gelled together and we work. It's like a comedy act on stage and people buzz off it, you know? But... In general, I, I like doing hardcore, original, old school, um, jungle, early jungle. Yeah, that's that's me really. Very good. Yeah. Wicked. I've noticed you got your um, you got your fiftieth birthday party coming up soon, and the lineup yeah, yeah. looks yeah, line absolutely every, yeah. wicked. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Like it's yeah. just my my mate was messaging me the other day, and he was saying, "Dan, like." You don't even see them line up flyers anymore. Me. Like, but you know what? I'm blessed. Like, I'm blessed. Like, every single person on that flyer, they're like, friend, they're, they're like family. You understand what I'm saying? And I'd do anything for them. They'd do anything for me. And that's, that's how we run, you know? Tell, tell so, everyone who it is and where they can get tickets from and stuff. Um, it's the, we're not actually doing tickets. We're doing a guest list. So it's predominantly, there's a Caribbean there, which is free to everybody. Yeah. Um, drinks are obviously not free, but... Um, for the artists and that they are obviously, but well, I'm, I decided not to sell tickets for it because it's a celebration of life and it's for me. I've made it to fifty. You know what I mean? So we're just going to have a, a good crack. But yeah, it's at the it's at Moros, which used to be the old country club back in the day called Jungle. Um, yeah, so it's it's there Moros at Chigwell. Um, it's on the twenty eighth of October, and uh, yeah, so it's five till two in the morning or three in the morning. It's going to be a good crack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah, I think that's going to be buzzing. Uh, I can, oh, mate. that lineup, I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people, a lot, a lot of people are going to attend, and a lot of people said they're coming. And do you know what? It's it's humbling for me because they're people that watch me on stage, or they're good friends or family, and it's just look, it's a big, it's a big birthday, and I just want to enjoy myself and uh, have a, I might have a drink. Yeah, <laughs> champagne or something. I don't know, but look, it is what it is. With whoever wants to come, they can ping us over their names, and we'll uh, we'll let them come. It's no problem. But yes, yeah, it's, it's going to be a good day. Wait. Hopefully, at the weekend you was away MCing, Mister. Yeah, what I was. was doing... What was that about? What was that like? Uh, the Centre Force Tenerife weekend. Yeah, that was right. So I went with LSD. We stayed together for the weekend. Um, we've done a party at Rejoice Bar. We actually done run my radio show, me, Billy Daniel Bunter, and LSD back to back um, on the radio, live from the Rejoice Bar in, bar in Tenerife, one of the Centre Force bars, um, with Pasha Randy Swallow. Um, we we done that part. We done that party, um, and then Saturday night we done a two up past two in the morning set in the north of Tenerife, in Santa Cruz for Hone. Absolutely amazing guy as well. DJ Hone from Tenerife does Canary Islands DJ, but he's such a lovely fella. He's so like us, mate. He's, he's great. And he brought, he kind of brought the scene over there, you know, come over here, brought the scene over here and over to Tenerife and that. So, yes, he's, yeah, he's really good. We had a good time. I've done Cavos last year. I've done Ibiza. I've got Malta next year, Cavos. Yeah, it's, it's good, man. I'm buzzing, man. It's good. Yeah, no, no, it's pop, it's proper picking up. Like, like I said, I've seen you on everything now. Like, so it's just proper, proper buzzing, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, look, I'm blessed, bro. What can I say? Like, at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's not, for me, this is not a living. You understand what I'm saying? So I, I'm blessed that I can go and do radio shows. People are now paying me to go and MC and seeing what I can actually do. 
and what crowds I can do. I mean, I've done some big raves, mate. I've, I've done thousands of people in front of me, you know, and it, now it just feels so natural. And I'm enjoying every minute of it, mate. Uh, the more pe people that book me, the better, because like I can say, it's, like, I've got a living, but to actually get out there and do it with these legends and people that I follow as a youngster, you know, and work with them is just very humbling, mate. It's, and it's very nostalgic. Do you know what I mean? And these people have ended up my friends now. They're close friends. I tried to keep my circle very small now as I've made some terrible mistakes growing up and in business and stuff like that. And I keep a very limited of close friends now. And, and it, it's just nice. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. nice. No, nice one, Dan. So what have we got to look forward to in the future? What's coming from the Dayline stable? Well, I don't know. I, said, uh, I was speaking to Pablo the other day, my mate, who I'm on the radio with. He wants to do a tune with me, with Rehab. Mm. Um, add my voice in the tune. I've got, I've got a lot of... <laughs> A lot of bookings already for next year. There's a few things going on this year. Do you know what I mean? So I'm just kind of like, mate, whoever calls me and, and wants to book me, I'm just, I'm there. You know what I mean? I don't let people down. I, I, I mean, Billy Daniel Bunter calls me Iron Lungs. You know, I'll, I'll do, I'll go on stage and I'll do four or five hours straight. Do you know what I mean? Like, it don't, and, and I'm, I'm drinking water. You see what I'm saying? And, I, and I'll just start and I'll just talk and chat and, have fun with the crowd. So yeah, I just whatever comes, comes, mate. And I'm sure there'll be more. And and, and it'd be great if, if it does happen. Yeah, yeah, you're you're definitely blessed. I know that for sure. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and it, it, it's I, I I know it's because of 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 your healing. You put you're putting more, you're putting back into society. You know, you're yeah. Back in yeah, yeah. why you're being blessed because you, you, you yeah, it's you, a big part of life and it you 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 know, you've been through, a lot of people will say they've been through things in their life and that they haven't really seen bad times. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. And I've struggled a lot. I mean, last last year I had quite a bad um, mental health issues last year. I had to have like 70 sessions of counselling. People, people never knew Danny Lyons, Mr. Energy, you know, Mr. Love. That's how I project myself. But inside I was not dealing with the problems I had. So... You know, and I think it took me a long time to actually realise that, you know, you can give out a lot, but inside there is there's old wounds there and old trauma that you need to address. And I've done that last year and I, I feel a lot better person for it. No, nice one. Nice one. Well, Dan, it has been an honour to chat to you. And We've you, been mate. this for a while and we've finally done it. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> wicked. I love it. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna see. You. I, I, I think I'm gonna try and come down to your birthday. Um, yeah, lovely. You know, and put my name down. Um, I will. And uh, yeah, just I buy you. Yeah, I'll you. I buy you water, orange juice, whatever oh, yeah. they've got in their pineapple. Yeah, juice. You ain't got to buy anything, mate. Just come. <laughs> just but yeah, come. it's been it's been nice to speak to you, my man. Um, keep up the good work. Um, yeah, and I'll see you right there in Partyland. Thank, thanks very much, mate. And I'll, um, I just wanted to say thanks to everyone at the Centre Force Radio as well. All of the legend DJs, you know you are, that supported me and blessed me with like being able to be on stage. I've got a massive shout out as well to some of the artists and promoters that have booked me through the years and uh, worked with me on radio and on stage. Chris Paul, love you to death. Um, original Orange Crew. Got lots of time for you, Chris Paul. Wicked fella. Um, Mad P for booking me for Jason K's Memorial this year. It was an absolute honour and a privilege. Jumping Jack Frost, Nicky Black Market, Eastman, Vibes, Nookie, Radford, Jimmy LaBello, Criminal Minds, Chrome and Time, Amnesia House Crew from Coventry, Mr. C, uh, Ray Keith. Um, massive shout goes out to all you guys. And of course, Richard Raindance as well every time. Um, keep it centre false. Um, big up all the Centre Force family and listeners every time and catch me next week at Brave Story um, Dan there at Electroworks isn't it? and nice thanks very much to you bro nice one Dan catch up soon my man we'll see you soon mate alright mate. see ya bye 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 bye, bye, -bye.